Okay, let's move on to the subject of today, which is truth. Jeez. Truth. Well, you got the truth? Yeah, we uh, the truth. Uh, the truth. What's the truth? <laughs> okay, so let's recap a little bit of what we did, and that is this. We have philosophy, okay? Love of wisdom, uh, the, as defined by the uh, Greeks. Wait. We've departed from physics. We're doing philosophy now, right? No, not well. Yes, uh, we're we're trying to contrast philosophy against physics. That's all we're doing here, okay? So it's not that we're going to be doing or really getting into philosophy. We're just trying to say first that philosophy is part of science, and then we want to distinguish it from physics. That's that's the purpose here. That's the goal, okay? So here we start where the uh, Greeks started, essentially, you know, and that is that um, they um, define philosophy as love of wisdom. That's I think the exact translation of of the word philosophy, okay? Okay, that's at least the translation we have today, and that's a meaningless definition. If that's what the word stands for, that's fine. We'll call it philosophy. We can also call it love of wisdom. Now we have to define what we mean by love of wisdom. How is it defined? Well, a lot of people say, well, it's just a way of thinking. So everybody's got a way of thinking. You have a way of thinking. I have a way of thinking. So everybody's a philosopher. We got eight billion philosophers. And so how is Aristotle different than us? He Why do we say, is. oh, he was a philosopher. And so what am I? I'm a philosopher too. I have a way of thinking too. Yeah, we're all philosophers. <laughs> we're all philosophers. What's wrong with that? Yeah, so, so it's, uh, that's what's um, irrational. The fact that we, we're using a notion or a definition that does not tell us what philosophy is. You know, if, if philosophy is just a way of thinking, we haven't said anything. And uh, what we do here, we say science is rational explanations. Within that, philosophy is rational explanations of reasons and purposes. Now we can fit philosophy within science and not above science. It's not that philosophy is the mother of all sciences, it's that philosophy is a branch of science. We got that? So yeah, the uh, Greeks, that's why I crossed them out, you know, the... Uh, uh, Parathon down there, uh, you know. Uh, Still sounds that, like stamp collecting to me, Bumps. Oh, it does? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. why? Tell me. All that categorization, like, I still don't understand the, if it's philosophy or science. As long as we understand the question, and we answer the question, who cares what if it's biology, chemistry? Well, no, uh, there's a couple things there. The first one is we can't say that Aristotle was a philosopher because we're all philosophers. That's, That's a, an okay. opinion. Yeah, no, 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 it's not an opinion. It's uh, by definition. If, mm -hmm. if, if philosophy is a way of thinking, we're all philosophers. Yeah. That's the first so it's one. That's true. Okay, the second one is I go to the university. I'm going to study philosophy. Oh, what are you studying? I'm studying opinions, way of thinking. Yeah. What yeah. is that? What yeah. What the hell is it? You got it. it. That's exactly <laughs> it. That's exactly nonsense. You, you have not misrepresented it at all. Yeah. <laughs> what did you study? Opinions. Yeah, uh, opinions. I studied recommendations. I studied uh, uh, eight billion ways of thinking. That's exactly yeah. what they do. <laughs> recommendation. Yeah. yeah. That's what philosophy uh, This is the problem. Okay, so uh, here's a comment uh, someone made. Okay. Uh, ah, what happened here? Okay. I had science. Why don't I have this? Oh, hold it here. I think it's this. Jesus. Is that what it was? The video thing isn't working? I don't know what happened here. Okay, I gotta skip that one. I don't know what happened to that uh, thingy. What were you gonna say? <laughs> uh, well, I had some definitions of uh, what philosophy is according to the dictionary, so I guess I'm gonna have to skip that. Okay, here we have Plato. Okay, he, we talked about him the other day, the fact that uh, he said knowledge is justified true belief. Essentially, that's what came out of his book. <laughs> belief, uh, belief, belief. The, like that, yeah. the uh, Theotetus, uh, that's his book. And there he essentially has Socrates talking to Theotetus. And, um, <clears throat> and Plato essentially, you know, after the death, after the suicide, the forced suicide of Socrates, he tells us uh, how it would have happened in the presence of Socrates. This is how the uh, discussion would have taken place. And these were the arguments that Socrates raised. So he raises a series of arguments to show that uh, eventually, right, that he concludes that knowledge is just justified true belief, and that's the definition that has survived for the last 2,500 years. That's what we have today. Nothing has changed. Even with the Gettier problem and other analysis that we see out there, we all end up with the same thing. It's just justified true belief. What is justified? A belief. What is true? Uh, we're going to argue today that that's a belief too, okay? And what is belief? What's belief? So we have belief, belief, belief. That's what knowledge is. Just uh, three beliefs. Believe, believe, believe. <laughs> but it's I believe three times. Belief. So I believe. Well, I believe. But it's in three times, so he believes harder. That's what you're saying. So what is knowledge? It's belief. It's opinion. And what is opinion? What is belief? Religion. It's not science. Science is not and not knowledge. Science is rational explanations. Okay. So let's all put that in in the right context. That's what we argued this week, uh, this month, really. And uh, we don't ask you to agree with it. We don't ask you to believe in it. We ask you to, if you don't like it, fight us. You know, um, challenge us. 
Come up with a better mousetrap. Show us that knowledge is something other than belief. Define it. Don't don't begin talking about Bill. You're wrong. Knowledge is not belief because you're you're wrong and whatever. We don't care about that. Just give us your definition of the word knowledge before you begin to say anything. Because people like to go in there and say, "Well, you're wrong, and I don't agree with you." We don't care about that. Define the word knowledge, and we'll know what you mean, right? Knowledge, then we'll know. <laughs> no. Okay, yeah, then we'll know. Then we'll believe. We'll know what knowledge is, right? We'll, we'll believe it. We'll believe what knowledge yeah. is. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, so a fellow says in there, he says, knowledge does not equate to belief. Whoa, and should not be considered synonymous with beliefs. Okay, and if that's how it's been defined since the days of Aristotle, then that's most unfortunate. Okay, what is knowledge according to this gentleman? He says, knowledge is awareness. Awareness, okay, okay. of objective reality, objective oh, realities, yeah. <laughs> objective, these are objective realities, which can be empirically verified by all others. Okay, let's find out. He says, I know my finger was cut off. Well, that sounds like knowledge. He knows, right, <laughs> that his finger, that he just cut his finger. I mean, if he doesn't know that, he doesn't know squash. <laughs> okay, uh, so let's find out if this is knowledge, okay? Uh, he says, this is knowledge according to him. It's awareness. He's aware of an objective reality. The objective reality is that his finger is no longer, he's got nine fingers, okay? <laughs> he cut his finger off, okay? So it's a, he knows this. Okay, so everybody would say, well, yeah, it looks like that's knowledge, right? Sounds like that, democracy. Well, yeah. well, let's I find see out. his fingers cut off too. Well, let's find out if this is knowledge, okay? It is no longer a belief, but rather a statement of objective reality. I am merely recognizing, okay? Knowledge is based on direct experience with objective certainty, or at least should be. Should be. <laughs> okay, okay, so this is the same thing as the three stooges there. Uh, there he says, I don't believe, I know. And Mo says, yeah, I don't believe you know either. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what's the problem with what this uh, fellow says? Well, belief is what you know only yourself, and knowledge is what you prove to others. Okay, so here you ha he says he cut his finger, and he says that's knowledge because he has direct experience. He knows he cut his finger. Mm. Well, the first problem there, he hasn't defined the word knowledge. He says awareness. <laughs> okay, so, so let's find out. Let's go with his definition. He says he's aware he doesn't have a finger, that he lost a finger. Okay, I'm on the other side of the planet. And I'm in contact with him by phone. I don't have video. Okay. Even if I had video, he could be faking it. Yeah. He doesn't want to come to work that day. He says, I cut my finger. And I said, well, I don't believe you. How's he going to Prove it. it. He's on the other side of the planet. Well, uh, I have my company in commute. China. That's... I have my company in China, right? And I live in Europe, right? And so he cut his finger in China. And he calls me and says, boss, I can't come to work because I cut my finger off. I only have nine fingers. And I said, well, you're a bum. You never come to work. Now you're giving me this lame excuse that you lost a finger okay. and that they're going to sew it on at the hospital and that's why you can't come to work. Okay. okay, so I got a problem with that because I'm saying you're lying. Your belief is wrong. And I'm saying, hold it. You know, I cut my finger. I don't, I've got nine fingers, boss. Yeah. And I'm saying, prove it. Show me your knowledge. We have that exact same thing going on in the chat and, here and, with proof. <laughs> yeah, and so, the so, proofies. And so, so the issue is knowledge is something you have to prove to someone else. If you only have your knowledge to yourself, it's called a belief. Also, oh, we do have a difference between the two. Yeah, because if you only proved it to yourself and yeah. are aware of it for yourself, what do you have? You have a belief. The only way you're going to prove knowledge is someone else. Believe you can prove only oh. to yourself. Now that you have to prove this to the rest of the world. Hold on, but that is is a good uh, connection there. No, could you say <laughs> you're going to get into trouble? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's go with this. Could you say that belief is a shared? Uh, sorry, knowledge is shared belief. Have we gone there? If both of us share a belief, I think you're going to get in there. I know. I want to have. We know this. Where's my? Uh, we know. No roller. Just smack you. <laughs> okay, let, let, you're the only guy on the island. Okay, and you're aware, you know, blah, 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 you believe because you're the only guy there. Let's, let's take it with something that is more uh, deeply involved with knowledge and belief. God, good old God, you know God exists, okay, because you know it for whatever reason, the beautiful flower, the bee buzzing around, only God could have made it, so you know God exists. Okay. okay, so now prove it to someone else. I mean, if you have it yourself, we call that knowledge or we call it belief. Is this the same thing as cutting your finger, where you have an awareness and you say, well, I know I cut my finger. Well, you know, but I don't. You examples. know that uh, the killer stabbed the victim in the chest and killed them because you were there. The jury wasn't there. The jury is just relying on your word. Prove it. Prove your knowledge. How are you going to prove your knowledge, your awareness, to someone else? Because if, if only you have it, we call that belief. Yeah. But if uh, you what, share it yeah, we share with it. the jury, but see, the jury doesn't believe you. No, but then you don't share it. That's <laughs> well, if I don't share your knowledge, no, no, no. what do I we don't mean for, share. Me, knowledge, for me, it's belief. I don't mean by share. I mean, I don't, that's not what I mean by share. I mean, like, we have, if we have the same belief, would that be knowledge? 
Well, uh, you and two. the jury believe it. You share that belief, but the guy on the other side of the planet doesn't believe it. Because he doesn't know. Right. <laughs> ah, that was too many examples. So, so what you guys to one example. Well, so we, do we have to uh, convince every uh, intelligent being in the universe uh, for it to be knowledge? Then we say, now it's knowledge because we have 100% of people agreeing. I agree. mean, the religious people are sure are trying. <laughs> they're, gonna, they're trying to convince everyone. And the reason you know, I bring up uh, this as a background, first because we did philosophy, belief, and knowledge, but there's another reason here, and that's that all this has to uh, do with fact, proof, and truth that's how we're getting to truth to the truth we're, we're arriving at the truth Our, so i hope i hope fact <laughs> proof and truth are synonyms <laughs> okay so here we have oh, another fellow says again they copy paste a lot of these uh, definitions they don't analyze them so he says no be aware again awareness okay of through uh, uh through observation inquiry or information okay Okay, so you're, you're, uh, you're being aware of something through observation, inquiry, or information. What is belief? and acceptance that a statement is true or that something exists. Okay, so again, uh, this is the rundown. You prove your knowledge to your neighbor who did not observe and is unaware. Okay, that's what you have to do. Prove it to him. Okay, don't prove it to yourself because then you're like the guy on the right. You know, he thinks he's great because he's proved it to himself. So, so he, his belief has turned into knowledge. Okay, for him, he knows it. Why? Because he believes it. But it's when you try to convince someone else, when you try to prove it to someone else, that you run into trouble with knowledge. Okay, and then uh, the question is, are you aware or unaware of God? You know, if you're aware, uh, you call that guy a theist or a deist, and if you're unaware, you call him an atheist. <laughs> that's all we have, right? That's, that's where, as far as awareness goes. Did you observe God or space-time? Did you observe him with your eyes? Like, how did you observe him? You know, so if, if uh, knowledge requires observation, did we observe the black hole? Did we observe space-time? Did we observe dark energy? Okay, or energy of any kind. Well, I guess they would say we've observed derivatives. Yeah, we, we deserve the outcome, the what we can see, not yeah, not the yeah. invisible object that caused it. That's right? what I mean by derivatives. Yeah. We don't see God, we see his effects on God. Yeah, right, and, and so we infer God, yeah. we infer we space infer, time, we yeah. infer energy and so on. Yeah. And so aware is what? Acceptance, meaning belief. So when you say that knowledge is awareness, all you're saying is belief again. So he says, be aware uh, through observation. Well, all you're saying is that you believe it. That's all it is. Uh, in science, we have a little different notion of all this. Acceptance of a statement, that a statement is true, that's known as an assumption. We make an assumption when we say, okay, I'm going to accept that it's true. I'm going to accept it as a fact for the purposes of understanding the theory founded upon it. That's the way we look at that. You don't have to believe it. Okay, it's just an assumption so that you understand the theory, and uh, you can see the assumption to understand the theory founded upon it. Chair exists whether you believe or not, uh, or no, or whatever. Okay, the chair exists by definition not because you believe that it exists or that you've seen or touch it. Mm. Okay, we have to define the word exist, and then based on that, the chair exists or not, based on the definition, not because of your subjective notion, belief, or knowledge, or whatever you want to call it. Proof, fact. Okay, so here are the uh, definition of truth, okay? Okay. And uh, so it's related to proof, fact, and knowledge. Uh, these words are all related in one way or another. And here you see the definitions of dictionary.com and of the Wikipedia. And I've colored them in so that you can follow how this is all circular because all they're using is synonyms. Truth is conformity with what? Fact or reality? What is fact? Something that actually exists. What, or, or reality again, and truth. So we're back to truth. It's just juggling the same words. Yeah, then reality was that the state or quality of being what? Real. What is real? Uh, the word that we're trying to define. And real thing or fact. What is fact? Well, we just covered that. It exists or reality. Truth. <laughs> so all we did was go around in a circle. We haven't learned anything. Uh, hopefully the Wikipedia does a little better. So we look it up and says truth, the property of being in accord with what? Fact or reality. What is fact? Something that is true. <laughs> I love that. What is reality? Well, the sum of aggregate or aggregate of all that is real or existent within a system as opposed to that which is only imaginary. What is existence? The ability of an entity to interact with reality. Mm. Okay, so yeah, I hope you understood all of that. Okay, <laughs> Yeah, it's all circular. We don't have a single definition of any of these words. We have no idea what they mean because they never defined them. And, um, and so whether you go to the dictionary or encyclopedia, you won't find an answer to your question. If you want to know what a fact is, what reality is, what existence is, what truth is, they're all synonyms. One just takes you to the other. Knowledge, proof, they're all circular. Okay. It's like we all know the notion, but no one yeah, has but to no put, one knows can, how to put it into No words. one can put the finger on it, yeah. you know, and they say, well, you can't define any words because uh, then you would have to define all those words that define those words, and it's just, uh, you know, uh, recursive. 
Okay, so here's the Stanford Encyclopedia. Hopefully they did better. I mean, these guys are professional right. philosophers. I'm all of them. And here, truth is one of the central subjects in philosophy. Great. That means that we're going to have a good definition here. The problem of truth is, uh-oh, the problem of truth. What truths are and what, if anything, makes them true? Okay, what? but this simple statement masks a great deal of controversy. I'm sure it does. So, so far they say, look, uh, truth is going to be a problem. And there's a big debate raging for thousands of years, right? And uh, it's still controversial. Okay, so they go in here and they say, a belief is true. What are they going to talk about? True beliefs. Well, your belief has to be different than my belief, or likely is, or maybe. And so how does truth, is gonna, if truth has to do with belief, we're already screwed. We're, okay. both, we're both true? They're both true? Yeah, they're, they're uh, we're both true. God exists and God doesn't exist. both true. You know, so we have a problem because if they, yeah. it depends on belief, it already it depends becomes subjective. depends on subject. who you ask. Yeah, it's subjective. Which is actually the closest thing to truth, actually. <laughs> it depends on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> and only if it corresponds to a fact. What is a fact? Well, we looked it up. Uh, remember what a fact was? It was, uh, you know, uh, truth. <laughs> truth is fact is factory to believe. These are statements that you'll see in the uh, in the article on truth. Okay, this is where I pulled. Ah, I like letter. the next one. Truth is the end of inquiry. I think that's my favorite one. Out of all of them, that is the one that hits it on the nose. Well, the end of Once inquiry you stop, for you. Yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. When you stop asking questions, when you say that's just how it is, that's the truth for you. <laughs> that's the truth I don't for wanna, you. I give up. That's for me, I go one step further. Yeah, 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 but for me, I give up on this line, and that would be true. I think that really is the closest thing. Okay, and I say P is true just if it is identical with a fact. <laughs> So what is fact? Well, fact is truth and so on down the line. So uh, then they talk about theories of facts. A theory of facts. What the hell is that? Facts and knowledge justified in believing that. That's uh, nah, what truth nah, is. No, 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 no. But truth is the end of inquiry. I think that was... That was that's the one you like? That's the one I like. Okay. Then all, all of those... So we have a definition of facts. Finally, the there end of that? inquiry. <laughs> that. So what is the, the issue? The issue is here you have the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, which the only word it can't define is the word philosophy. You will not find the word philosophy defined in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. And they're telling you not only they don't understand what the word knowledge is, what the word belief is, but they don't know what the truth is, what proof is. We're in the same boat as everybody else there. So you won't find an answer in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. You can skip that. There's a long article. If you want to kill yourself, you know, you got nothing better to do than read it. Actually, but. no, it's saying the word know or knowledge is the end of inquiry. That's what Truth, truth is what God knows. Right. And truth is what God knows, but no is the end of inquiry. Uh, That's you, when you, you stop you're asking. taking the punchline away from me. Oh, so. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but one more uh, topic related to that, and that's you have truth, and what's the opposite? Well, it's fake, false, right? Fake news, you know? Uh -oh. And so here you have uh -oh. false, not according to truth or fact. Incorrect. Uh -oh. Not true, untrue. So who determines that? A jury? Uh, a judge? Who determines what is false, what is truth? Again, uh, all we're talking about is opinion. And, you know, I like to tell, tell Ans all the time the following. I said, truth is what Mother Nature knows, what uh, uh, God knows, what the Father Universe knows, what the devil knows. They know exactly what happened. They know exactly. They have it in a file cabinet. This is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. The problem is us humans, we're mortals, you know, we have no access to that file cabinet because it's in the past. We don't know that Napoleon went to Waterloo in 1815. We don't know this. All we, that's in their file cabinet. They know for sure, but we don't. We can only rely on what someone told us through the books, through passing it on from generation to generation. And we accept it. And we say, well, yeah, I think that no one lied really here. I think Napoleon went to Waterloo. But I cannot prove it to you. I cannot bring Napoleon in 1815 today and show him to you and say, this is Napoleon in 1815. I can't do that. I can't bring Neil Armstrong stepping on the moon in 1969 today and say, look, this is how it happened. I can't do that. Okay. Unless we're talking about the block universe where everything is determined, because then you just retrace your steps where all the atoms were in whatever date Mean, you need. Meaning God, uh, Mother Nature, Father Universe, the devil, no, no, they know, we don't. Assuming you had that machine, what was the... The, the time the, machine? No, not the time machine, the, the, <laughs> go to the, future the atom calculating machine, the one that can tell you exactly where... Oh, yeah, atoms, where every you know, atom in the universe is. If you retrace each atom's steps, yeah, yeah, then yeah. you could tell where Napoleon was at what date. Yeah, if you could do that, you know, but again, uh, you would have to go to the past, to that point, to 1815, and say, okay, yeah, now... I verify that Napoleon here. Yeah, is you in retrace Waterloo. the steps of the atoms. But that means, yeah, but that means you got to go back in time because you're taking the universe, every atom, back to where it was. No, you know, two hundred years ago. Can you just calculate it? 
Well, uh, can you? this is a fictional if, machine, so yeah, we're using yeah, magic yeah, yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you had the the location of every atom in the universe and retrace it back, but again, I would have to convince you of that. Even oh, yeah. with a computer, I would have to say, look, if I take all the atoms back, I got all the atoms in my computer, yeah. right? I got them all in the universe, and I take all that back. See, this is where this uh, atom was. This is where this galaxy was. Says who? If we yeah. if we have all that information, <laughs> you know, again, only God has that information in his file cabinet. I don't have that. You know, I can only guess. So truth is what. God God knows what Mother Nature knows, or you know, uh, uh, truth, proof, all this stuff. In fact, you know, this is what they know, what these deities know. All we can do is make a statement of the facts and say, "This is what we think happened. This is my assumption," and work from there. I can say, "Let us assume." We could be God, wrong, but that, this that, is the best we have. Right. That, let us assume Napoleon was in Waterloo, and you say, "What do you mean assume? Of course he was there." Well, no, you can't prove it to me, so we have to make an assumption, and it's a. An assumption you can almost put the hand in the fire for because everybody just passed it on to us. Aren't, aren't we kind of trying to find which assumptions are true when we, because when we do physics, when we, yeah. anytime you're doing physics, what you do is you throw out a set of assumptions and then you logically follow those assumptions to its logical conclusion. If it doesn't make sense, then the assumptions were wrong, right? Or but, something was wrong with the assumptions. And we keep doing this test to see which assumptions are the best fit. Well, that is what we do. When yeah, we yeah. But there's, let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is with the Moonies and flat earthers who yeah. say uh, Neil Armstrong did not step on the moon in 1969. Yeah. So you know it, this is more or less like Napoleon. You know I can't go back to Napoleon to verify that he really was in Waterloo in 1815. Likewise, I can't go back to 1969 well, and say uh, <laughs> Napoleon <laughs> landed on the moon. <laughs> I don't know, man. I can't say uh, Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. I can't. You know I have to make the assumption. Let us assume. And, and then work from there onwards. Now, why do I make an assumption? Well, first of all, because, you know, I was there in 1969. I was there. You weren't there. Maybe you were born after that. So I was there. You know, I looked at it. I said, yeah, I think this happened. And I didn't, I, I wasn't on the moon, you know, filming, uh, you know, Armstrong stepping on the moon. I just looked at that. It all sounded real to me. I think it was real. And that's what I believe. That's the assumption I work off of. The new generation, they say, well, prove it to me, Bill. Well, I can't prove it to you. And I can't prove it to you for the same reason I said so many times now. A movie of that made in Hollywood is no different than the real thing. And if you cannot tell the difference between the real thing and a movie made in Hollywood, you can't use that as an argument against the, the, the actual phenomenon that Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. You can't say, well, that could have been done in Hollywood. Yeah, it could have been done, no doubt about it. And if you can't tell the difference, you can't use that as an argument. You can't say, well, that's, that's the reason I don't believe that uh, Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. You can't use that because if you can't tell the difference, I can use that same argument against you and say, prove to me that he didn't. And you say, well, that could have been done in Hollywood. Yeah, I, I grant that. And what, what have you said? Nothing. So this is the issue. The issue, I cannot prove to you that, that Napoleon was in Waterloo in 1815. I just have to take it at face value from what I read in the books and say, well, it's a good chance that that's what happened. Okay. But again, we can't prove these things. Truth what Mother Nature knows, okay? She, they know the truth. They know exactly what happened. They know whether the guy stabbed the victim in the chest because Mother Nature logged that phenomena in her uh, book and put it in the file cabinet. We have no access to the file cabinet. We can only make an assumption.